the inevitable. Dreaded the first day, and the Yonkaku arrived. Hanley and I were dumped into a taxi cab, screaming and kicking against the injustice of it all. When the cab stopped in front of a large, square, grey frame building, Mother fried us loose. Though we clung to the cab door like barnacles, she half carried us up the hill. We kept up our horrendous shrieking and wailing right to the school entrance. Then a man burst out of the door. His face seemed to have been carved out of the granite and with a turned down mouth and the nostrils flaring with disapproval. His flake marble eyes crushed us into quivering silence. This was Mr. Osashi, the school principal, who had come out to investigate the abominable and Japanese noise on the school premises. Mother bowed deeply and muttered, I placed them in your hands. He bowed stiffly to mother, then fastened his eyes on Henley and me, and again bowed slowly and deliberately. In our haste to return the bow, we nodded our heads. With eyes disdain, he snapped, that is not an ojigi. He bent forward with well-earned precision. Bow from the west like this. I wondered if Mr. Osashi had the nerve to criticize us in front of mother what more he would do in her absence. School was already in session, and the hallway was empty and cold. Mr. Osashi worked briskly ahead, opened our door, and Henley was whisked inside with mother. I caught a glimpse of little boys and girls sitting erect, their books held outlight on the desks.